Hey folks, it's DC here from DC's Gadgets. And I'm in my backyard today. I'm going to set up a cell builder. Um, a little five frame nuke right there behind me is my cell builder. I used it once before for three weeks and then I gave them a, uh, a queen cell to finish out. And for the last week and a half or so, she's been in there laying eggs. And so we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to turn it into a cell builder. Um, for a couple different reasons I'll explain in a minute. But first, we're going to do a commercial. Right, so this is my little queen calculating gadget disc that I put together. All right. um, pretty simple operation. The, the inside wheel represents the day the egg is laid. Cover my face up. And the outside wheel represents, represents the day of the month. Now, when you're graphing queens, you're always going to graph day four. You're looking for day, day four from when the egg is laid. And I'm not going to get into this discussion with eggs and larvae. Just day four. And if you're going to do queens, you got to have some kind of calculation going on. Whether it's an app on your phone, or you use a wall calendar, or some kind of spreadsheet, or, you know, get my little disc. It's pocket-sized, it's really durable. you got to have some kind of calculation. Now, if you're doing thousands of queens commercially, you don't need this thing, because you do it all the time, you do it in your head. But if you're a novice beekeeper, maybe you want to raise queens one time, maybe you want to raise queens for a single month, it's really nice to have. It, it lets you keep track of everything that's going on. I mean, you look at the wheel, you graft it, it tells you from the time you grafted it when the bee should have the cells capped, when you can move into an incubator, uh, when she's coming out, the little star indicates when she's coming out, and when you should put them in a nuke, and then approximately when you could expect her to be laying. So the way you would take to really work this, you would line up day four with the day of the month, and then you progress onward. You can also go backwards, which is what I'm doing today. I need to have queens coming out on the 13th because the 13th of this month is our club meeting and I want to take the incubator to the club meeting and I want to have queens actually coming out in cages because I think that would be just super cool to have that happening while at a club meeting so people see this so to do that I've got to find when she's going to come out on the 13th so I take the little star and I line that up with the 13th and then I just run it backwards and find the word graft, and it tells me that if I want to have queens coming out on the 13th, I need to graft on the 1st. Can I have my finger in the way? It's all right. So in order for me to have queens come out on the 13th, I need to graft on the 1st. So I'm out here today. It's the 1st of August, and we're going to graft. We're not going to do normal grafts. We're going to do what's called the Miller Method. And the uh, first thing we're going to do is go in this box, and there's a queen. We're going to find the queen. I'm going to stick her in a cage. And then I'm going to find a couple of frames that have eggs and larvae in it. And I'm going to make some diagonal cuts with my fishing knife across the comb. And what this does, it actually it cuts the bottom edge of the cell off so that the larva is no longer exposed simply horizontally. It's also exposed vertically. Because we know that if you have a queenless colony and you have the proper age larva in a vertical cup, they'll make queens out of it. So, the method is attributed to a guy named C.C. Miller. Whether he himself discovered it or just perfected it, nobody really knows. Somebody somewhere along the line realized that if you break the comb and you break the bottom edge of the cell open and they're queenless, they'll make queens. There's a guy named um, Mel Dissel Cohen, I think is how you pronounce his name. He wrote a book about it called On the Spot Queering. Same basic principle. What he does is he finds larva in the middle of the frame as a proper age and he just breaks the bottom wall of the cells open with a hive tool or a screwdriver or your finger. Same idea, you've, you've exposed the bottom of the cell, so you've created a vertical orientation versus just horizontal. So let me zoom in a little bit on that nuke box, and we'll pop it open, we'll find the queen, and move on. overcast. I'm expecting a little bit of irritation, but we'll see what happens. I've got gloves in my pocket, just in case. Right now, they're not moving around much. Oh, come on. Now my fan doesn't want to turn. Here it goes. Maybe something. A piece of grass in it.
check the lid. Um, I've seen it too many times where the queen's just hanging out on the lid. So, a couple dead bees there. I said, we'll go in here and try to find her. I do my cell building in five frame nuke. It works out really well for me. I'm not trying to make lots and lots of queens. I typically graft on bars of um, eight to 12 at a time. And the, the five frame nukes have done pretty good. Um, just did some last week at the club yard in the five frame and I put in 12 grafts and they, they finished 12 cells. In fact, the, uh, the first one came out today. They're not due to come out until tomorrow. There's always at least one that comes out early. So let's see what we got here. And I could use my fingers. These are half inch boxes and the fingers don't fit real tight in these half inch boxes. But we'll give it a shot. It's gonna hit a little angle here. They're on there. All right. I got some brood in there. Unfortunately, that's a foundation frame, and I'd like to use this frame, but you can't do the Miller method on a foundation frame. So you can't cut that plastic foundation. I don't see her on that side. Let's see if she's over here. The hive beetle. Some young larvae. Been here recently. Well, I don't think my plan is going to work because I don't think I have any comb here I can cut at the diagonal. So, what I might do is take a frame from a different box. It has a young larva on a natural cone into the same cutout. I'm looking for the queen first, though. I saw her in here three days ago, four days ago. Hive beetle. Go back to this frame. There she is. She has a white dot on her back. Cage out. Right, she's in the cage. And I'll get her a couple of tendons to go in there with her. The bottom looks smaller. She's trying to get out. So there's nothing here suitable for what I want to do, so what I will do is take one of these frames out, and I'll go to that one next door, and then we'll find a frame with some, uh, let me use that frame right there, in fact. We'll find a frame we can make cuts on, stick it in this box.
Don't expect her to be laying anything in the top. I see some honey up here. Let's go down. Now start on this side. Talked about this before, let me just show it again. I use tongue depressors or craft sticks, stick on the top, coat them with wax with a paintbrush. They're actually too wide. I've, I've taken to splitting them in half so it doesn't stick down so far. But the bees draw, draw wax on it, and it draw, I found that they draw wax faster on this than they do on plastic foundation. Here's some new cone. I just got tagged. It's a foundation frame. Trying to get away from foundation frames. Alright, there's a nice frame. Very nice, yeah. I'm looking for some young. Unfortunately, most of it's a cat brood. I don't see any young larvae or eggs here. Yeah, this has got potential here. Let's see what we got. I have eggs in there. There's some larvae right there. Eggs right there. Kind of in a strange location. Let's see what's in the next frame. I'd like to find some lower on the outside fringe. I'm not cutting. Here we go. This is a good frame. In fact, we might see the queen out here somewhere. Let's see on this side. Here on this side. I don't remember if I marked this queen. Most of my queens have a white dot on their back. Even though white is not the color for the year, I find it easy to find white. I don't see her on here, but that's okay. We're going to shake these bees off and look more closely at the. What's in these cells? I've got older larvae down here in the bottom. I've got eggs right there. I've got eggs right there. Okay, I've got... Right here is a good, good row. I don't know how much the camera is going to pick this up. There's some stuff right in this area. Right in this area. There's a few cells in there that look like the right age to me from right here. So I'm going to cut a diagonal line across that. Try to cut the bottom out of eight or ten of those cells. Let's see what the bees do.
and help things along a little bit here. Go to this side. I've got it right there. I'm gonna take this corner off too. I'm gonna break out a couple of these cells. That one looks good. I'll flip it over to the other side. It looks like. Oh yeah, I got good right here. The only drawback to this is I could end up with queen cells directly opposite each other, which I guess it'd be okay. I could just cut the two off together and stick them in a mating nuke. But if you're just trying to make a couple queen cells to make a couple splits, and you're not trying to actually breed queens for a living, this is pretty easy to do. You don't have to graft. You just gotta be able to see the cells. All right, so we're going to leave it with that and stick this in the first box. And I'll come back and look at it on Saturday, see what they're doing. Slide these all over. The beetle. I'll put this right in the middle. And I'll come back here in about half an hour and I'll refill that feeder jar. And I'll make sure it stays full until Saturday when I come back here and check this. So the middle frame in my five frame nuke has got my cuts and we'll see what happens Saturday. And as a bonus, got a mated queen in a cage with two attendants and a white dot on her back.